this episode was a trial for both of us, wasn't it? <laughs> ah, almost as much as it was for Dash. <laughs> Took me an hour to watch a 22-minute episode. That's without commercials, by the way. I didn't. I watched the version without commercials, so it took me an hour to watch this because of all the pausing. I have this little thing. I feel embarrassed for the characters, even if they don't feel embarrassed, but I feel embarrassed for them in situations, and I have to pause and then move on. Speaking of moving on, hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episode 7, Newbie Dash. Partial side commentary provided by the kitten. <laughs> She's being very needy right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, as I stated in the little intro there, oh, I had to pause so much through my first viewing, and I only had to pause once through my second viewing. There's good things about this episode, like all the impressions that Dash went through, which were unneeded. Actually, most of this episode was really unneeded based on Dash's reactions in the past to things like this and how much he's grown as a character. So let's revert it back a little bit so we can get this story out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad she's a Wonderbolt now and everything, but there was a lot in this episode that wasn't really needed and was completely avoidable based on her current personality. By the way, I don't think there's gonna be much Positive from both of us on this episode. <laughs> and Ember's keeping quiet because she probably is checking over her checklist of all the things I want to rant about. <laughs> well, if there's anything positive to be said about this episode, it's probably going to come from you, so. <laughs> like I said, the impressions were good. I didn't really laugh much because I was pausing so much. That's pretty much where I was pausing constantly was the impressions. Let's see, I know there's I know, a couple of other things. That, oh yeah, it's not the lesson of the episode, but it's a lesson you should learn from it is if someone's calling you something and they're your teammates or your friends, you should let them know that that something is bugging you and you don't like it. Because communication is key in any team. <laughs> so since Dash wasn't communicating anything, yeah, this was one of those episodes where a misunderstanding could easily be resolved by one character telling another character something else, but for plot convenience to make sure that character, even though that character would, under normal circumstances, tell the other character, not tell the character. <laughs> Did that come out right? I think I got confused in my head halfway through that. <laughs> yeah, basically for the purpose of this episode, Rainbow Dash was forced to act out of character and against what has been shown to be her attitude, traits, and abilities in prior episodes. Mm -hmm. Pink Pie was fun, and I feel sorry for that poor, poor cotton candy salesman. <laughs> Does he have anything left for the rest of his customers? And did Pinkie Pie pay extra? Yes, he did. Didn't you see? He still somehow managed to have the pieces that had already been sitting out when Pinkie Pie kept insisting that her piece be bigger. How those pieces managed not to get engulfed in Pinkie Pie's cotton candy when it was handed out through the opening of the shop. I have no idea, but it was still there. <laughs> Let's see, poor Spike at the beginning of the episode. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, shoved into luggage. Yeah. We got to see Scootaloo, that's nice, but poor Scootaloo being confused at the end, like, what, what? you want me to do what? <laughs> yeah, let's see, anything else? Oh. I'll try to come up with counterpoints to anything you come up with, just to give us some balance. So. All right. Well, one positive thing I'm going to say is we did see a lot of use this episode uh, of the wings as hands. Oh, yeah. I'm not entirely sure how practical that is, but there was a lot of use in it in this episode. Yeah. And some technical stuff real quick. I like the filter they put over the announcer's voice over the loudspeaker, because you could kind of understand them and kind of not understand them. Kind of like... It really is at most of those events where they announce over the loudspeaker, you're like, I can kind of hear what you're saying, but because it's so loud. That was very well done. It reminded me very much of when I used to be dragged to air shows as a kid. And I, I like the audience being kind of blown away when the Wonderbolts flew by, especially poor uh, Pink, not Pinkie Pie, <laughs> Fluttershy, same voice actress, different character, <laughs> being blown right into Twilight and Twilight going, hey. <laughs> I was thinking more of Rarity and her getting her hat messed up. Mm -hmm. So let's dive right into Ember's rants. <laughs> All 
right. Skipping straight to the incident that causes the other Wonderbolts to call her Rainbow Crash. We have established in episode testing testing one two three that Rainbow Dash is hyper aware whenever she is flying. There was no way that she wouldn't have seen those two coming down the runway. And with her speed, there's no way that she was in any actual danger. The only point to this was for her to do something embarrassing so that the other Wonderbolts could name call her. Yes, and based on her pace and the Wonderbolts coming in, even at normal walking speed, she would have made it across perfectly fine. And based on some other stuff I observed from the episode, she, even if she looked both ways, would have been clear to walk across the runway at that particular moment. So a little stuff there that kind of makes that, that entire incident kind of moot and wouldn't have been anything, especially if Spitfire hadn't have said anything. If they really wanted to do it, they should have had the characters almost right in the runway, then Rainbow Dash started walking across, because then there would have been a valid reason for Rainbow Dash not to have had time to make it across the runway. Yes, and there would have been more point into calling her out on her breaking of protocol by not looking both ways, because if she had looked, she would have seen. But let's dive right into the name calling. Hmm, Rainbow Crash. Yes, let's make it very hurtful by making it the same thing that those other bullies called her when she was just a foal. Hmm. Let's not forget that Rainbow Dash as a foal was still very strong and gutsy and confident in her own abilities. In every flashback we've seen, even with the name calling, with her meeting with Glinda, with her defense of Fluttershy's honor, she never backed down. She stood up to those bullies when she was just a foal. She's been around the Wonderbolts long enough that she should no longer be intimidated by them and have that squeeing fangirl reaction that we had at the Grand Galloping Gala. So she should be able to speak to them, especially since she tore into Spitfire during the Wonderbolts Academy episode. So there was no reason at all that as soon as they said Rainbow Crash, she couldn't have respond, couldn't, wouldn't have responded with, hey, knock it off, not appreciated. And at any time, she should have been able to say that, instead of just muttering under her breath, my name's not Crash. Tell them you don't like it, and don't answer to it. When someone calls Crash, and you know they mean you, don't answer. Old saying, it's not what you call me, it's what I answer to. I'm just going to have done another thing with knowing how good she is, and made the name her own. Make it not mean what it meant anymore. Make it something powerful instead. Which is what could have happened on the dawn of the second day after she talked to her friends about each being special in their own way and was able to talk it over with her friends and feel better about it. But instead of pushing it aside and working to be the best flyer and best Wonderbolt and best Rainbow Dash that she can be, she wasted a bunch of time in impersonating all of her friends instead of focusing on what makes herself special. And speaking of those impressions, I really like the little touches they did with her main style and how it changed to match the other main six. And I think Rainbow Dash looks pretty good in Rarity's main style. She does, but she would never spend that much time on her main. A main style like that wouldn't last that long flying anyways. Not without a lot of hair gel. And your aerodynamics go right out the window. And then, when impersonating Twilight, there was absolutely no point in wearing the broken nerd glasses. Oh, if we're gonna... Do that, why didn't you have a hat like AJ's when you were doing Applejack? And speaking of that particular impression, Dash would already know about the pre-flight checklists. It's part of flying, period. And even if she didn't realize that, from all her time spent training at Wonderbolt Academy, she would still know it because this was the second day of training. And they would have gone through the pre-flight checklist on her first day of training. So unless she was making improvements to the pre-flight checklist, which what could you possibly improve on? I'd truly like to know. But no, she was making up pre-flight checklists when they already had those and she would have already known that. Also, I can't believe they were immune to her Fluttershy impersonation because she talked about going away and never coming back and was so quiet and apologetic. I'm like, wow, you guys are immune to that? What sort of monsters are you? <laughs> and maybe they're exposed to so much cuteness already, it doesn't affect them anymore. I know I have. I'm joking, I still get affected by your cuteness when it's used right. 
and small nitpick because this doesn't seem to matter as much in the MLP universe, considering that it's mostly a clothing optional world. All of the Wonderbolts share the same barracks in the same locker room? In the human world, those would be very separated. I'm only pointing it out as a difference, not a true nitpick of this is wrong. This is my last real major nitpick of this episode. Rainbow Dash's reckless behavior in involving a minor in something dangerous. So bad enough that you want to change up the routine by doing something dangerous, which could endanger the rest of your team because they don't know what you're up to, and hello, they're up in the air with you, and lightning strikes are not necessarily predictable, even in the MLP universe. But you want to pull Scootaloo away from the show that she's excited to watch, set her up on her scooter, going down a ramp that faces a drop-off when her wings are not large enough to let her fly. So if she overshoots this, she is going to be in danger of severe injury or death by falling, and you want her to kick a dangerous thundercloud. Also, another technical note I haven't mentioned yet is almost all the shots with Spitfire in them show that she's left hooved. She primarily uses her left arm to point out things, to talk about things. I think the only scene where she doesn't use it is the scene where she's holding the clipboard. She may be using her right hoof then. Mm -hmm. And it would be her left foreleg, not her left arm. Well, they use it as arms. <laughs> They're still quadrupeds. And so to do another correction, they say flat feet when it be flat hoof in that universe. So, which is a nickname of one of the characters. Which brings me around to my other nitpick, which, due to some earlier technical difficulties, I completely forgot about. So, Rainbow Dash is now okay with being called Rainbow Crash, just because everyone else has a mean nickname? Just because it's now hazing and not personal does not make it any better. If anything, it makes it worse. So everyone is given a cruel nickname at the beginning of their tenure at the Wonderbolts. That is hazing. It is not a thing of camaraderie. It is hazing. And considering that Spitfire is now pretty much the leader and her name is apparently the worst, she had the power to make all of this stop, as did every pony ever in the Wonderbolts from the moment this started by simply saying, no, this is not right. So that is a horrible lesson, that you should accept a negative name that someone calls you, even if you don't like it, if it's part of fitting into a social group. Yeah, that was something I picked up on too at the end, like, really? R really? Okay. This didn't really resolve anything. <laughs> I'm glad that Rainbow Dash is now Wonderbolt and all that stuff, and okay. <laughs> so are we pretty much done with our nitpicks? Mm-hmm. Ah. <sighs> Well, I hope you've enjoyed our little nitpick slash rants in this episode. And I really hope the next episode is actually really good and we get excited about it, so you guys don't get too many negative episodes in a row. <laughs> Please, because having characters act out of character, irresponsible, cruel for no reason, and the episode reinforcing bad behavior is not a direction that a children's show, well, the last one, is not a direction that a children's show should be taking. Things being out of character and contradicting themselves is common in children's shows, but MLP has a much wider following than that. Mm -hmm. And usually has slightly better writing than that as well. Which is why it has a larger following. Mm -hmm. Ah, Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episode 7, Newbie Dash. Thanks for watching. If you want to be notified of new episodes, please subscribe. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you would like to support Lux's creative talent, you can check out his Patreon or check the link below for commission availability.